Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. I am Dr. Faiz and I am going to demonstrate how to assemble a low cost bottle bubble CPAP for a low resource setting where you don't have that CPAP machine or you don't have that air oxygen mixer or blending device. And this is what I have learned from workshops conducted in Children's Hospital Lahore by Dr. Irfan and his team and I really found useful to share to especially doctors who are working in the neonatal and in the pediatric intensive units. But before watching this video, please review what is CPAP, what are the indications and contraindications. And uh, please note that we are going to make a circuit that connects air and oxygen. And the reason behind that, we have to provide pressures with least possible oxygen concentration to prevent oxygen toxicity especially in our premature babies who are very sensitive to oxygen in your unit you'd find two points on the wall panel one would be for air and one would be for oxygen and usually they're side by side and those points usually you connect your ventilator to so pick two free points and attach them with the flow meters and our circuit is going to be uh, about connecting the both points together for which we need two nasal prongs two nasal prongs and you use the size that would fit tightly to the anterior nares of your patient and this is what is opposed to the simple flow oxygen where we use a uh, small size to make 50 percent of the anterior nares free in this circuit we have to provide a tight seal so two nasal prongs one surgical tape a surgical scissors and a water bottle use any type any size but should be sterile I have used this type this uh, one because this was available for me right now and uh, I have marked it using the help of a scale starting by zero and ending up with 12 and zero should be at the level of the water two holes on the top a pair of gloves and maintaining a septic technique should be understood by default so the first step I take the both ends of our nasal prongs and I remove them just to understand this is our nasal prong this is the nasal part and this is the end part I have already removed it just to save time so I take both ends from the nasal prongs and I remove them so those are the both ends of the nasal prongs step two go to the nasal part of one of the nasal prongs and I go to the point where is the bifurcation this is the bifurcation and beyond the bifurcation I can cut at any level so I have done already the cutting and I have this Y shape tube now. This was step two. Step three, I take the both removed ends and I connect them to my Y shaped tube. And while inserting, I should insert as deeply as possible to prevent any leakage of air. And then I seal the connection using the sticking I like this paper sticking because it molds and uh, makes a tight seal with the edges of the uh, connections so what I have is y-shaped tube now and this was the end now it is free now I have the nasal part from the uh, removed uh, nasal prongs and I am going to connect it to the free end okay this is the nasal part that I removed before I take one of its ends and I'm going to connect it to the free end of my y-shaped tube insert as deeply as possible make the seal and I have this nasal part that I'm going to connect to my patient this is the other free end this free end would go into my water bottle but because i'm going to put the bottle below the level of the patient maybe on the ground maybe on the table i have to extend it just to make an appropriate distance 
so I have removed some part from the other nasal prong and I have made this small part now I'm going to connect it to this free end and I take this tube and I connect it to the bottle okay and I insert it to the level I want usually we start by five centimeters of water so the for the other point I have left is to help the air coming out of the bottle so for that I just have did a small cutting from the other nasal prongs just to make a chimney type so this is my bottle bottle this is the nasal part that is going to the patient and this Y shape connections would go into the uh, flow meters one for air and the other for oxygen so we start our CPAP by giving the patient one liters of oxygen one liters of oxygen means that I'm providing the patient with hundred percent of oxygen and that is very toxic for that reason we have connected it with air now with one liters of air I am going to reduce the oxygen concentration that I am providing from hundred percent to sixty percent and by this by increasing the flow of air I decrease the oxygen concentrations in another video we can uh, talk about stepping up or stepping down and weaning the patient from the CPAP now coming to the peep peep is usually made by our bottle water and we start by giving the patient a peep of five centimeters to step up we increase the peep from five to six up to eight and then while weaning off we can decrease so this was about the connection and uh, to make sure that your connection is right we need to have bubbles in your bottle if there are no bubbles that means that there are some leakage of air and most commonly the leakage is at the nasal part yes the nasal part so you have to make sure that there is a tight seal another could be from the connections that you have made so just make sure that all the connections are sealed with no leakage and you would for sure find bubbles in your bottle and that is how you confirm that your CPAP is functioning properly so for the stepping up and stepping down we'll have a, another video and uh, I have uh, attached a video that I have used earlier CPAP to one of our patients so this was for today thank you for watching take care